Uh, we can start now. Um, uh, I say uh, salamu alaikum to Brother Samuel. And <clears throat> sorry, I forgot your name, Brother. <clears throat> Sadiq. Sadiq. Brother Sadiq, yes. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we are going to talk uh, about mostly today uh, about shaitan uh, in Quran. Uh, because uh, uh, in reality, I am a former apostate. Okay, I'm born in a Muslim family, but at the age of 25, I started to question God's existence. And because of lack of knowledge, because I was 25, I started to decide after a few days, I started to decide that God doesn't exist because I didn't see any evidence uh, that God exists. It wasn't because evidences didn't exist. It was because of my lack of knowledge. I didn't know. So I decided that God doesn't exist. Alhamdulillah, I got time and uh, I got uh, help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He guided me and uh, I learned and then I uh, realized I got the, the evidences and I converted to Islam. And my uh, task is now mostly um, uh, to, you know, uh, to invite people not because God exists, because I have come to this uh, conclusion that God doesn't need us to believe in him because if he did, then he would show himself, okay? What God needs is that we uh, follow his demand because he is going to solve our problems on this planet, okay? We have then you have, you have... Sorry? It's okay, it's good. Yes, yes. So uh, um, my question is always to different religion. Okay, if I follow your God or your religion, how your God or religion can solve our problems? We have a lot of problems on this planet. We have prostitution, drug, war, dictatorship, uh, uh, corruption, all these bad things. So if your God can solve these problems, even one of them, because I know, according to Quran, all problems has one source, and that's the shaitan. So if your God can solve one problem, that means that he can solve all problems because all of them have one source. And unfortunately, I have seen that my fellow Muslims, those who are even intellectual, they don't know who is shaitan. I ask them, they get stuck suddenly. Last night, there is a, uh, the, um, there is a, a group called the uh, Dawa Wise, and they had uh, a doctor uh, in their program, and they were talking two hours. I went online, I was asking them uh, about shaitan. Within two minutes, they cut my voice because they cannot answer my questions, okay? Because they, don't, they just know shaitan, that's all. They don't know anything else. That who is this shaitan? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this shaitan? And if we say that Islam is the solution to our problems, then how can be solution when the problem will always exist? You don't, I mean, unfortunately, they don't think. They don't analyze things that if Islam is the solution, which I believe, and I can prove everybody that, see, Islam is the solution to every single problem we are facing on this planet. But then how, if shaitan is going to always be there until Riyama, and he's the source, then how, like you have, like you have a cancer in your body, and I say that I have the cure, but you will always live with this cancer. Then what is that? It doesn't make sense. You have the cure, so this can, you have to get rid of the cancer first. Otherwise, you cannot cure me. So this is what I want to open this uh, shaitan. That if shaitan is the source and Islam is going to solve our problems, then Islam has to get rid of the shaitan, okay? Which I have learned from Quran that shaitan will disappear one day from our, uh, our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tried <clears throat> to warn us uh, from, I, I go directly to this, uh, uh, my own uh, interpretation, that shaitan is nothing but the capitalist system, okay? that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tried to warn us from this capitalist system because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shaitan spread poverty among you and lead you to immorality, okay? 
And I know that 1% of the world population, they own $110 trillion. $110 trillion, which is 50% of the total capital of the planet. And 50% of the total population of the planet, they own less than half a percent, which is $1.7 trillion. And that's not shared between them equally. So who spread poverty among people, according to Quran, is the system, those 1%, they spread poverty among 4 billion people and guide them to prostitution, to drugs, to all immorality. So if, and then this, uh, this uh, verse of Quran, if we analyze it, we understand that shaitan's power is uh, poverty. If poverty doesn't exist, because Allah SWT says, he spread poverty among you, then he guide you to immorality. So if he doesn't have the poverty, then he cannot. And Prophet peace be upon him says that when poverty comes in from one door, Iman goes out from another door. So everything is connected to the poverty and poverty is, poverty is the opposite to wealth. So if you want to get rid of the poverty, you have to get rid of the wealth. And wealth is from the capitalist system. We see that 1%, and I heard that one uh, billionaire in uh, Saudi Arabia, he has, his car collection is a billion dollar, just his car collection, one billion dollar. Okay, so when we leave, and Allah SWT says that I have sent Quran to establish justice, so if he's going to establish justice, this is not justice that one person has $1 billion car collection while millions of people go hungry. So how Allah SWT is going to get rid of this problem is the only way is to get rid of this system, this jungle system, which the strongest get the most, the weakest get little or nothing has to die, okay? So okay. there are lots of things that, uh, tell us that Islam's solution is an equal world, a world that we live for each other, we share everything with each other, we work fisabilillah. I'm now going to locate the shaitan very fast. That imagine brother Samuel, you are a grocery owner and I have, I'm hungry, my family is hungry. I'm coming to your grocery, I cannot buy food because I don't have money. So I steal food. Shaitan fooled me to steal food. But imagine that you are living in a world where money doesn't exist, the grocery doesn't belong to you, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you just work there and you get reward. I come and take whatever I need, I say, God bless you, brother Samuel, thank you very much, assalamu alaikum, and I go. Shaitan didn't exist in the second picture at all. So where is Shaitan? Shaitan is the money. Is that, one more thing is that, if shaitan is the one that uh, is that angel or jinn that's uh, fooling us, then he has to fool everybody equally, okay? Farmers of Afghanistan, our brother Muslim, uh, uh, brother sisters Muslim in Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the world opium, 90%. Why? Because it gives them more money than potatoes and tomatoes. They can sell that for hundreds of dollars per kilo, but potatoes and uh, tomatoes 10 cents if they can sell it they might not be uh, able to sell it even but opium they can sell it 100 percent there is a market for that but in sweden <clears throat> majority of people are atheists farmers of sweden they don't produce a single gram of drug why because shaitan is not visiting sweden no because the system here is less satanic okay <clears throat> my home country iran before this regime come to power, in, during Shah, Shaitan existed. We, we were doing bad deeds. There were per persecution, drug, everything was there. But after Khomeini came to power, everything has increased a thousand times. Crime, prostitution, drug. What happened? Shaitan became stronger. No, a more Shaitanic system got the power in Iran. So the system is Shaitan, not that angel. Uh, or, you know, this, this is very easy to understand that Shaitan is Khomeini. Shaitan was, Khomeini was a bigger Shaitan than Shah, Shah of Iran, okay? <clears throat> During Shah, 
my father, who, is, uh, who was getting a basic salary, his basic salary was $500 a month, okay? And $1 was seven two months. Seven, just seven two months. We could buy a house, we could buy a car, we could buy even a store. <clears throat> now, average salary is $75 or $100, okay? Depend on the price. Because $1 is 30,000 two months. Okay, so it's poverty, this Khomeini spread poverty among people and led them to a thousand times more immorality. So according to Quran, which said shaitan spread poverty among you, Khomeini was a bigger shaitan than Shah. He spread poverty among people. Now 75% of Iranian living under poverty in the most richest country in the world because we have oil, gas, everything. Yes. But you notice here that the role of America and Israel and these countries in harming I know country. All okay. of them, yes, brother. That's the system, I say. These ayatollahs are not crazy to kill people. They kill because they want money. This leader, Khamenei, he didn't have a flat before the revolution. Now he's $200 billion rich. So what... Okay. Yes, please. I'd like to say... You know, the main religion in the world today is not Christianity or Islam. The main, religion, the main religion in the world today is materialism. Exactly. And people don't worship in mosques and churches. They may call themselves Christian. They never go to the church. They yes. may call themselves yes. Muslim, but they're very seldom in the mosque. Yes. They yes. worship in shopping malls. Yes. Exactly. They worship in car malls. They're, they're looking. Shaitan has told them. If you have this car, you'll be the happiest person in the world. Or he talks to this teenager. If you have this iPhone, it shows beautiful girls around him. If you have this iPhone, you're going to be happy. And the creed of this new religion in the world today is the one who dies with the most stuff wins. It's a lie from shaitan, like you say. But the, uh, what I meant, uh, Brother Samuel, what I was saying is that Shaitan is the system, okay? Yes, that system tell them that if you buy this car, yes, girls come. But imagine that, as I said, a world without money, okay? Then you cannot gain $110 trillion, uh, you know, uh, uh, with capital and drive hundreds of millions of people to $1 a day, living on $1 a day. So if Shaitan doesn't, I mean, this system doesn't exist, Farmers of Afghanistan, they will not produce opium because they cannot sell it. Then you cannot sell it. For, uh, tobacco companies, brothers, they kill 5 million people every year, tobacco companies. Why? Because they, can, they are going to sell uh, uh, cigarettes uh, to make billions of dollars. If money doesn't exist, they will not produce a single cigarette. Why do they have to produce it? By saying that, by saying this is haram, Alcohol is haram. It doesn't change anything. People go after it. What help is to get rid of the source. What is the source? That money that the um, alcohol companies, uh, factories, they try to, uh, you know, make advertising that, oh, this brand is very good. You know, they make this, all this advertising and then different brands to sell it, to make money. So if they don't make money, nobody is going to, to uh, produce alcohol. What only maximum, some people, they produce wine at home, maximum. Not for sale, just for own use. And that <clears throat> later, by educating people, you can get even rid of even that one. But the main problem will disappear, okay? So <clears throat> I say shaitan, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair. He didn't create shaitan. Why? Because... If we believe that he created the shaitan, it's like that US government, for example, <clears throat> uh, spread a virus among people, everywhere in USA, if you catch this virus, and government say, if you catch this virus, I'll put you in jail. That's not fair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair. He's just. This is not justice that you spread a virus among us, a deadly virus, <clears throat> contagious virus, and then you say, if you catch it, I will punish you. No. We created this system ourselves. That's why he tried to guide us, to warn us. That's why he says that Mahdi, when he comes, he will establish 
absolute justice on this planet. So, <clears throat> so what does it mean? It means that there will come a day that that one percent, and then Allah SWT says in Quran as well that uh, I promised, I have promised that. Um, this is uh, that I promise you that one day the oppressed will rule and inherit the planet. Okay, so if because in Islam we have mustazafin and mustakbirin, so if this one comes up, it doesn't mean that this up will go down and become again oppressor and oppress oppressed. Okay, so the promise is that it get totally out of the picture, we get rid of the oppression and, you know, oppressor. So what will happen, this 1% will disappear because they are oppressing people, okay? Dictators, they are oppressing people to become richer and richer. So the idea of Mahdi is, another thing is that uh, I had a discussion with uh, other people that I said that Mahdi is just a message. With, I, I had a discussion with the brother. It doesn't mean that Allah Taala is going to send a Superman and save us. If he was going to do that, he would do it during Second World War, First World War, when Chinggis Khan was destroying, the, killing millions of people. Why he didn't send the, uh, this uh, Superman or this savior at that time. For example, now in uh, uh, Syria, our brothers and sisters are bound by Assad, okay? So imagine in 20 years, they get a democratic government and uh, everything will be fine. Then Mahdi will come down and say, hey, I've come to save you. People say, excuse me, you should come that time, not now. We don't need you now. Sweden, if uh, Mahdi will come and say, hey, I've come to save you, then people say, no, come on, we don't need you. Here is very good, everything is fine. It's not perfect, but it is fine. So who is Mahdi? I said to everybody, Mahdi is me, Brother Samuel, everybody. We can be Mahdi ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything in Quran. That's the way we stand every day towards Mecca and say, eh, sirat al -mustaqim. show me the right way. And the right way is those dress of Ahram, which is equality. No rich, no poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to go there and experience this equality and say to him, yes, I accept it. I will follow it. And then we reject the opposite of that equality, which he explained for us that is the shaitan, inequality. He explained for us who is shaitan. Yes, brother. My brother, uh, the shaitan will not go away. Okay. Okay. Uh, the shaitan <coughs> is doing his job. He's yeah. not forcing us. Okay. The, uh, the last surah in the Quran, Yes. means he whisper. Yes. He is the whisperer. Okay. So he have no power over you, over me, over anything. Yes. But he whispers. Okay. He whispers the wrong direction. Okay. Okay. The direction is this way. He wants you to go this way. Yes. So, yeah. and there is no big solution for the world problem. We start usually by the individual. Okay. Myself, if I fix myself, if my brother Sam fix himself, then he can fix his family, then I can fix my family. Mm -hmm. And luckily, luckily in Islam, we have a road map that we can give to our children. Brother, I have four children here. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Each one of them is a story in how he found God. Yes. Luckily, we gave them the Quran, we gave them the salah, the prayer. Yes. And the prayer, you saw the young people in the mosque. They are trying. No. So, so uh, if, we, if, we, if we follow the path and we always repent, God's forgiveness is always there for us. Mm -hmm. Now, to solve the world problem of equality, this is not, it's not an issue. Okay. <clears throat> I start equality from my own. Each month from my income, I get some money. That's the zakah. Mm -hmm. Okay, even before I spend. I calculate and I get rid of it. I'm uh, not get rid of it, alhamdulillah. I give it to someone who is in need. That's a monthly process that we do. <clears throat> so that's where equality starts. Okay. Now, the big shaitan, namely America, is a different story. Hmm. You know, yes. uh, America have done, uh, Sam visited the, 
the Japanese uh, Hiroshima Center, you know, where, where the bomb was dropped. Yes, yes. Uh, and, 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 they, and they were claiming religion. So the devil was working there. Probably he was working in the president ears and he's saying, you know, just do it for the sake of the national security and go and kill people in Afghanistan with your drones in the name of national security and go and kill people in Pakistan in the name of national security. So we need to do something about that, but we will not resolve it. Okay. We will resolve it if our ummah is like you and me and Sam, we are trying. Uh, by the way, brother, I have, you, you, there is so many mosques in Sweden, as I heard. Yes. We have, uh, you know, I will send you some information. Inshallah. That can, that can help, I assure you. Yes. You know, uh, so, so maybe we send the site for Christian for Islam. Sure. Because christianforislam.com, Christian for Islam, can help people arrive to faith in God. Okay. You know, before you become a Muslim, you need to, be, to have faith. Yes. That there must be a creator. Yes. So this site help you arrive to faith by looking at a couple of uh, TED show. Yes. One of them, by the way, the first TED show you will see is actually TED show by the man who invented the MRI, the magnetic resonance yes. imaging. Yes. The man who invented the MRI went and scanned the mother womb while the baby is being created, and he saw miracles. Yeah. He is an atheist, but he said, I arrived. There must be faith. Mm -hmm. Then the idea that there must be one God, you will also see a program about the oneness, the connectedness of the universe. Yes. Then you will see some Christian talking so positively about Islam, teaching us about our religion. Mm -hmm. This means you approach these matters with humbleness, not with the idea that I'm going to solve it. Okay. You yeah. approach it with like Jesus approach, may peace be upon him, to be humble to arrive to humans and problems of humans. I never felt I can solve problems, but now as I look at my life back, I found that I helped many people and many people helped me. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Fa, uh, you know, uh, with this uh, humble approach, you know, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad taught us to be humble. Not, you know, when Prophet, if you come and ask Prophet Muhammad, are you going to solve the problem of the world? He will tell you no. Are you going to get rid of the devil? He will tell you no. The devil is one of God's creatures. He's managing, he's doing something. He's trying to deceive you and deceive me. Now, if I have a weak self, if my self is weak, then the devil can take me. But if I say, I take refuge in the name of God, then the devil run away. So, as we approach life, we approach it day by day. We do not approach it at the macro picture. We approach it as the micro situation. Okay. So as we move from one situation to another, inshallah, God will guide us. So tomorrow is another day for you. And tomorrow is another day for me. And the choice is in the front of us. The devil say, go right, left. Your heart will tell you where to go. And a'udhu billahi min ash that's the best attack on the devil. But don't say he will not come and go away. He will not go away. By the way, he's always whispering. He's always, he's in this moment, he's trying to tell me something. Oh, Sadiq, this is none of your business. Why are you talking about this? He's trying. But he's not trying to force you. He's trying to misguide you. Cause doubt. He tried to cause doubts. Cause, cause like, like mixing. Why this man is saying that? He wants you to be, he wants you to be proud, not humble. You know, he wants you to, to look like, alayhi salatu wasalam. May peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, and may peace be upon Jesus, alayhi salam. They both taught us among all the prophets, the most humble were those two. So humbleness is one of our approaches. Wallahu a'lam, wallahu a'lam, and God knows better. Sam, what do you think? Hmm. Can I qu ask a question, brother? Yes, sir. Yes. I would like to, op you know, that uh, it is not uh, opposing. I would like to open this, you know. Uh, yes, sir. You are an uh, uh, intelligent person, alhamdulillah. <clears throat> so we have to uh, analyze it, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. The, the way we have to analyze it is that <clears throat> shaitan fooled me. For example, if I go and rob a bank, 
you know that shaitan is the source of all bad deeds, okay? So if I go and rob a bank, all right, then it's shaitan that who uh, fooled me according uh, Islam. Am I right or wrong? If I go yes, and rob but, 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 you, but yeah. you did most of the job. Sorry? You did, okay. you no. did most of the job. Yeah. Let me say, let me say, it is shaitan who fooled me, okay? So if bank doesn't exist, brother, okay? So sh how shaitan can tell me go and rob a bank? If money doesn't exist, how can shaitan say to the farmers of Afghanistan, go and produce opium instead, tomatoes and potatoes? They will not do that, brother, okay? So shaitan is the money, brother. If it doesn't exist, then I don't go and rob, because I cannot rob. If, brother, if you have gold in your home, shaitan might tell me that go and steal that gold, because that's worth, for example, $1 million, okay? But if that gold, uh, uh, worth nothing because money doesn't exist. It is just like a metal. I will never come and steal it because you have some, uh, cr you know, metal there. So what made people to do that is this system, brother. Okay. So you have a uh, system of exchange, my brother, uh, yes. brother Mustaba. Yes. System of exchange throughout history. There was a medium and yes. that medium is expensive. At a given time, salt was expensive. Salt mm -hmm. was expensive. At another time, there was tea. You know, if you go to the Japanese, to the Chinese tea, they make it like a block and it becomes a form of exchange. Yes. So money is a form of exchange. If I want to exchange between me and the human, I need some kind of some, something. Yes. You take this and I'll take this. Okay. So, so money will not go away. Maybe interest is our problem. Interest. Okay. <clears throat> and but, interest, we are restricted in Islam okay. and in Christianity and in Judaism to take interest. Okay. Where money makes money rather than effort make money. Okay. You know, when, when you go to banks, what is the accumulation of wealth of banks? It is not their money. It's the money of the people, but they are playing with it. Yes. Using time to make money. Time makes money. How does time make money? So we have a problem called banks, but it's not their money itself. Yes. It is this exchange system. But can uh, that's the question here, brother, yes, about bank. Which capitalist system can survive without banks? No capitalist system can survive without banks. If you don't have banks, right. then you cannot put uh, money. So this is also, I remember my brother was a uh, long, long time ago. He was saying that Islam and capitalism cannot survive together because Islam is against interest. And everything in, in reality in this capitalist system is interest, okay? Uh, I have $1 million. I go, I was, by the way, I was in Islamic bank. I went and put some money there. I don't have $1 million, of course. I had just uh, some thousand dollars. I went there and said, how much is your interest? They said that, no, 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 here we don't say interest. We say benefit. I said, okay, it's the same, okay? You just fool yourself, okay? How many percent, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, like this, that I have $1 million, I go to the bank and say, how much is my interest? They say three, four, five percent, okay? Then I think that, why should I put it in the bank three, four percent? I can buy a, a house or a and flat so and rent it out and get 10 percent, okay? This is also interest. Or I think like this, that <clears throat> why should I do that? I can buy a store and rent it out and get 20, 25 percent, okay? Sometimes you don't have money. So what you have, your skill. You go and say to different companies, how much you pay for my skill, okay? This is also like interest. The one who pay more, you get the, What I say is that we have to live equally and fisabilillah, we get rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we do. The more reward, the more re reward we get. And they, it exists, don't say that it doesn't exist. It exists. I know a city that people give their lives in 40 years, they are giving their lives everything. They don't get a single dollar because they do this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so it is just to make everybody to understand and believe in it that this is, when you say, I ask you a question, now you said that shaitan will always be there. Be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved our problems in the past or not by Quran. He solved our problems, lots of problems. One of them we need was, to make choices, yes. Yeah, one of them was 
burying their daughters alive. That was a problem. He solved it, okay? There are other terms. So how many percent was it? 10, 15, maybe percent, or 20 percent he solved. Couldn't he, couldn't Allah subhanahu wa the Almighty, La ilaha illallah. Yeah. Couldn't he solve 100 percent? Of course he can. Why just 20 percent? Why 30 percent? Why he cannot solve entire? We, he can, but we don't understand it. Ehtina Sarat al Mustaqim is the way out of all these problems. Because we are in a test time, brother Mustaba. We are in a test time. Okay. We are making choices. Yes. We are making choices. The Choice. Quran says, yeah. even Iman, yes. and even if the Prophet is here with us today, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidi Rasulullah. Yes. He is not to force us to do something. No force, no. If we have compassion in our heart, love, yes. for, and this love should be transferable yes. <clears throat> by having part of your salary, by doing this, by doing that. But of course, we are also the slaves of the system. Okay. The, the, I cannot say that the system here is good or any, I mean, it's, it's the same problem we have. Everybody. The devil is, is working very well. Audhu billah. Walakin, at the personal level, always think at the personal level, at the individual level, at, and always think day by day. Don't try to overdo planning. You can't. Mm. And don't overdo yourself by saying, there is a problem in the world and I'm going to solve it. I, I can solve Sadiq's problem and maybe Sam problem, and yes. maybe Abdurrahman problem, and yes. maybe that guy problem. Now, if I can solve the problem of 10 people, God, I have seen him, I've seen so many times. I have big problems, okay? okay? And as I help others, but then God I'm help you. Awesome. Now, the saying of Prophet Muhammad, khayrun nasi, I want to, to, to listen to this hadith. Very interesting hadith. Yes. Allah salli ala Sayyid Muhammad. Khayrun nasi anfa'uhum nas. The best of the people is the best to the people. Yes. And Prophet says, and he was using, and he said, if I stay in this mosque, for one month yeah. in solitary, you know, praying, not going to women, doing all of this. And if he was saying like this, and, and I will read it in Arabic, please. I walk. Yeah. And if I were to walk in the need of my brother, is better than staying for one month in solitary. Solitary means you're not doing nothing other than prayer. Mm -hmm. So you can, if, if now someone knock on your door yes. and he says, I need some money and you had an extra 50 Corona it's called, or what is the name of the Corona? And you have 50 Corona in, in your pocket and you took it out and you gave it. It's better for you than you go to the mosque and stay for one month praying. Yes. What does this teach us? Mm -hmm. If we want to solve the problems of the world, we start with ourselves. Okay. We change our behavior. Mm -hmm. We change our thinking. And I'm trying. It's not yes. mean I'm succeeding. Yes. Sacrifice. You know, sacrifice. And then little go to the mosque. I, we have an idea, me and Sam. We have a paper called, What Does the Caller to Prayer Say? What Does the Caller to Prayer Say? Al adhan. Yes, adhan. People listen to the adhan in the mosque, but they don't know the meanings. Yeah. So what we did, we did in English. I have it also in Swedish, by the way. What yeah. does the caller to prayer say? Mada yaqul al-mu'adzin. It's an A4 page. Yeah. It says the adhan. Yeah. So people listen to the voice and understand the meaning. Allahu Akbar. God is greater. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, you are, you become like, uh, you, 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 you become, you transcend yourself to the others. Mm -hmm. You is transcend Sam. You tran. You sleep. You transcend. You know. You 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 help others. Then you are like impinging on other. Rather rather than because the macro problems will not be solved. Mm -hmm. You know the devil will not go. He is now with us. Yes. Of course he's very upset now. Okay, he's not that happy. Is what we're saying. Probably he will be happier with someone else there, you know, who's, who's thinking bad. But as we proceed in this life, we have to understand how humble we are, how weak we are. But God, you remember how weak was Prophet Muhammad? 
Did God tell him, I will take the devil away for you and then you solve the world problems? Or he let him with his passion of love to others, let him act and he supported him, God. But we are making choices and we will keep on making choices between what is bad and what is wrong, how to deal with this system in front of us, where should we, you know, it's, and I understand, brother, it's the, the system is so corrupt that we really don't know what to do. But subhanAllah, with some niyyah, you know, niyyah, the, the, yeah. your will, yeah. your will and your brother's support, then suddenly we can do something. Wallahu a'lam. Can I, can I say now something about what you uh, said, brother? <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi didn't uh, think that he cannot solve our uh, people's problems, so he did it. Uh, Nelson Mandela and other leaders as well. So we can't yes. do that. Yes, can do that. From his jail. Yeah, we cannot say that, uh, oh, I cannot do anything, so the system is like that. Anyway, another thing is that you, do, uh, you said that the choice is there. Don't follow shaitan. No, this is uh, absolutely... Uh, uh, you cannot say to farmers of Afghanistan who have to put food on their table, say that, okay, this is your choice. You can either die of hunger or uh, you can uh, produce opium instead, okay? The government of Sweden says that, no, I have to take care of the farmers so that they don't produce opium or drugs, okay? So they have very good, uh, you know, uh, very good economy here, so they don't go after uh, producing drugs. So the solution is not to tell them that, okay, you have to fight against shaitan. No, the solution is that to create a world where they don't need, even, yes. they, even, they want, even if they want, they can't. You cannot gather $100 trillion, $10 trillion in a world where money doesn't exist. You cannot. You cannot produce a cigarette and kill 5 million people every year. I have counted it. It is... 33 Hiroshima bomb every year explode on this planet, okay, by cigarette oil. And we don't hear the sound. So you cannot tell them that, okay, this is your choice. Either, uh, I mean, you follow shaitan and then produce, they do that. They go, they follow shaitan and produce cigarette. Whatever you say, they don't care. Ayatollah Khamenei in Iran, he doesn't care what you say. He killed people to gain $200 million, okay? He's $200 million. But, I billion or million? Billion. Yeah. $200 billion. It was a report by, <clears throat> first of all, U.S. Embassy, uh, ambassador, uh, amb embassy in Iraq and Ahmadinejad, his former pr uh, president, he, his two of his uh, deputies were, were caught because of corruption. He said, if you don't release them, I will release, uh, reveal you. And he released them, Khamenei released them, but anyway, later he revealed it. He said that he has these, 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 and you count them, $200 billion. <clears throat> so he do that, even you say, shaitan is whispering in your head, come on, create a war that he cannot, he cannot gain a single dollar. He will not kill people, he's not crazy. It is the system which drive people. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that shaitan, spread poverty among you and lead you. This is his weapon. Poverty is his weapon. Poverty is only exists in this capitalist system. If you get rid of this system, poverty will not exist. How can you get rid of the poverty? Get rid of this system. Get rid of that 1% that gathered. Ali Ali Salam, Ali Radiullah said that. <clears throat> He said that 1,400 years ago, he said that nowhere on this planet a ga capital gather unless hundreds of people opposite of it, okay? So create a world that people not even don't want, don't need, but cannot. The bank, if doesn't exist, I cannot go rob a bank when it doesn't exist. When I can go and take a mobile phone from the store for free, I'm not going to steal yours because I can go and get it, okay? <clears throat> so create a world that everybody, maybe it, is, maybe it sounds impossible, Maybe it sounds impossible, but that's the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Islam is a miracle because, not because it has more praying, more fasting, more rules. By rules, you can, even Sweden has rules. Drug is haram. <clears throat> I don't know, robbing is haram. This is haram. Even years, by Swedish, uh, atheist Swedish government, all this is haram. But by putting just rules, you cannot fix it. You have to get rid of, there is a, there are several children on the, floor playing with the knife 
You cannot just tell them that, oh, don't play with the knife. You will cut your hands. Go and take away the knives. That's all. They will not play with the knife. So this is what I say that <clears throat> Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved our problems 10, 20%, but it, he didn't stop that. It wasn't just by mistake. No, he aimed to solve our problems. But why just 20%? Was he stingy? No. He aimed to solve our problems 100%, but we don't understand. We stand towards Mecca and say, without knowing what does it mean. Why towards Mecca? Why not towards Washington? Or towards Buenos Aires? Why not sky? Allah is everywhere. Why not towards this way? <clears throat> because what's happening in Mecca is equal to... Yes. Why it's sad? I, ended the, I, I agree with you. What's happening in Mecca, brother? Uh, but poverty existed at the time of Al Sayyidna Ali, Yes. And existed at the time of the Prophet. Yes. But the Prophet and Ali, alayhi salam, both of them started from themselves. The Prophet Muhammad was not rich at all; was a very poor man, to yes. the extent of putting a stone on his stomach. Yeah. What does this mean? It means the Prophet started with himself. Okay. Sayyidna okay. alayhi salam, Ali. He was a poor man also, yes. okay? So what we mean here is that it, it, there is always a personal problem or a personal approach <clears throat> to the bigger problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless we think personally, when approaching a problem, we can you can convince Sadiq yeah. of the approach. Yeah. Luckily, our prophet is a poor man. <clears throat> he was not rich, he, was, he, he can be compared to people in India to the extent of putting two stones on his stomach because how poor he was. Mm -hmm. Jesus السلام, was also a poor man. Yeah. May peace be upon him. The only prophet who was rich in our story is actually Prophet Solomon. He was a very, very rich man. And we know why. Because God, if, we, if God wants to send you the most rich man in the world as a prophet, he can do that. Yes. If he wants to send the most beautiful man, he said, Joseph, he has Yusuf. If you want to send the most strong man, it is Musa. Yeah. You know, he's a very, very strong man. But in the final end, the last two prophets in our history time, Jesus and Muhammad were extremely poor, extremely humble, and that's where we can learn. Okay. Now, if you want to deal with this big system, this system can crack me and crack you and crack Sam. Yeah. It's a system. It's, 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 a, it's a whole... You know, I cannot say Saudi Arabia is out of this system. It is part of this system. Everywhere, everywhere. You know, maybe Sweden, because you have a very... Even, uh, what, even Sweden, uh, but... Yeah, socialist yeah, government. Yes. And the United States came with what's called World Trade Organization and tried to force it over Sweden and force it other on other European countries. And now what's called the social... Uh, social the social agenda is very weak. Yeah. Here is social democracy. Yeah, I know social, but and now I think the social party is, is ruling in Sweden. It, yeah, came, yeah. it came back. It is a, so it is not a, absolutely socialist, but they are they have. I understand. They have a mix. Made, they have made capitalism and socialism mixed. Okay, so they have reduced the gap. Okay, <clears throat> so now uh, this is a good is, idea, brother. Yes, it is a good idea, but it's not a perfect idea. But let me tell you that first we have to locate. We have to locate the shaitan. Okay. I told you um, that I gave you that picture of the, uh, what is it, store, the grocery store. We saw clearly that this, the shaitan existed in the first picture, that money existed. In the second picture, shaitan didn't exist, okay? And then I gave you the example of farmers of Afghanistan and farmers of Sweden, that shaitan is weak in uh, Sweden and is strong in Afghanistan. So, Clearly, we see that shaitan is that capitalist system that tell them that if you prefer <laughs> opium, you get, you pay, sell it hundreds of dollars per kilo. But in here in Sweden, because people are well off, because the government, as you say, you see that even here, they saw that pure capitalism is animal system. Okay, so they reduce it. They brought it, made it more human, human system. They brought the gap, as you said, take more yes. the rich, give it to the poor, okay? So in order to make it absolutely human uh, uh, system, then you have to 
get rid of the, uh, the gap totally, okay? As Quran says that one day the oppressed will rule and inherit the planet, it means that, <clears throat> the, the, it means that they, the, the, the oppressor, the oppressor will disappear, not that it will uh, produce new oppressor, okay? So if it produce new oppressor, then what is the idea that, okay, you take this? In al arda yarithuha ibadi as-salihun. Land will be inherited by those who are good. Yes. But brother, it goes back and forth. Because I, I, I tell you, that we were very poor in this country. Very, yes. very, very poor. Yes. And people were very good, actually. Yeah. Then this oil came. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And we became, in maybe 10, 15 years, 20 years, there were billionaires around us. Yeah. Suddenly. Yes. And... And instead of remembering God, remembering the poor, we remembered Lamborghini, and we remembered Maserati, yeah. and Mercedes-Benz, and, and we started building castles rather than building houses that can fit us, yeah. you know? And, uh, and, uh, and then the cycle started turning. And so the people who were now supposedly good, now they are bad. Yeah. So that now there must be something else happening. We will become back again poor. So we understand the tragedy. Al Quran says in Masakum Qarh, this this line of coming up and down, up and down. The Quran says, I will be sharing. In Masakum Qarh and Fakad Masal Kaum Qarhim Mislu. If you were to have harms, people before you had harm, were harmed. Watilkal Ayamu Nudawiluha Bain and Nas. It is days. That we move from between you, and it, and it, it, it is like like a like a cycle, brother. Yes. Rather than it's not a step in time. The good people will rule, and that's it. Okay. Because the good people, those good people, will be bad, maybe. You know, even when the when the Quran speaks about uh, the people of uh, taking the people of Israel out of Israel, he he said, so that will take you out of Egypt. And he will look how you, what are you going to do? So he, he supported them to come out of Egypt with Moses, alayhi mm salam. -hmm. But the, when they came out, they were started to be bad themselves. Mm -hmm. So it means you have missed the, missed, missed, missed the point of God. It's not make you rich to be rich. Made you rich so that you can help others. Okay. If you fooled yourself and you thought that you become rich because you are mm -hmm. nice or handsome, okay, then you have fooled yourself. Now, you became rich, you start wondering who is around in your neighborhood. And we start by what Jesus, alayhi salatu salam, Sayyidina Muhammad recommended. Start with your neighbors. Mm -hmm. I would go to my neighbor and know what is his situation. Start in the, the cat in the street, like Sam. You have all the cats of Jiddah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. That's a painkiller, okay? Is that not everybody. Uh, yes, you are right. You can't that's solve it. Let me tell you. Uh, me, okay. It is a painkiller. You are right. Yeah, let me, let me, let me uh, locate uh, again. I gave you many examples, uh, farmers of Afghanistan. I told you even my home country, previous government and new government, uh, what happened? Shaitan became more strong in Iran or what happened? It, it was a more satanic system got the power. Now, let me uh, give you this example. Yeah, but Shaitan brother, you remember the Shah and Savak? We cannot also ignore what that I man was doing. No, 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 no. I tell you, brother, I told you that that was a shaitanic system. Brother, sorry, brother, I forget your name. A good, beautiful name. Sadiq. Brother Sadiq, sorry. Brother Sadiq. He was a shaitan. I said that he was a shaitan, but he was a smaller shaitan, okay? This Khomeini was a bigger shaitan, okay? I agree. So, so what I'm saying is that imagine that tomorrow, just tomorrow, shaitan will disappear from our life. Just imagine, okay? So will farmers of Afghanistan wake up, if it is shaitan that whispering that you were saying, farmers of Afghanistan wake up and say, oh, why I'm producing opium? No, I'm not going to do that. No, they will not because they have to put food on their table. Those drug dealers in Latin America who go deep in the forest and produce cocaine and smuggle it all the way to, to USA, they will continue. Assad will not wake up and say, oh, why I'm bombing people. He will continue to bomb people. So what will happen? 
This, the only solution is not to get rid of the Satan. The only solution is to get, out, get rid of this system that gives the, it, Assad, or look, America, Obama, he sold $275 billion back in, in eight years, three times more than George W. Bush. Why? Because he was helping Iranian regime to stay in power and threatening, uh, uh, what is it, Gulf countries, and USA was selling them back. And I remember that uh, Hillary Clinton was coming to UAE and saying, hey, we can give you the missile shield to protect you from Iran. Excuse me, why to give them missile shield? You can get rid of the Iranian regime. Why to give them? So this is, the, you know, they were playing with the, the Middle East. So if we get rid of this system, then they will not be able uh, to sell so much weapon, okay? Now, even in USA, in USA, they are talking many, many years about gun control, just gun control. But these gun lobbies, they don't allow because they lose billions of dollars, okay, every year if they, they adopt this gun control system. So <clears throat> those who make billions of dollars, I saw this movie, uh, uh, JFK, I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, uh, you know, those, those who um, killed J JFK because he was going to stop the war in Vietnam and they would lose $100 billion a year by selling weapons to American uh, uh, military, okay? They killed JFK so that the Vietnam War continued. So all, everything you yeah. see, every single problem is because of money, brother. Get rid of this system that make, allow you to become billionaires, tri trillionaires, then problem will disappear. It's not shaitan. Shaitan cannot do anything because his power, his weapon, no. according to Quran, is poverty. Yes, bro. But we can't do anything about this system. All right. We can only do about ourselves. Okay. And uh, we know about the military industrial complex. Yes. We know about advertising. Advertising industry in America spends $38 billion a year to reach teenagers to make them think that they need this or they need that. Yes. In 1955, the average square foot of a new house was very small, three bedrooms, uh, one bath, the kitchen, living room, 1,400 square feet. Today, the American dream, that's when we coined the term American dream. One man could support a spouse, his wife and five children. But today, the American dream through Hollywood, through television, has expanded in the eyes, in the uh, minds of the people to, to uh, six bedrooms, three car garage. Um, it's unbelievable. And a husband and wife, both working 40 hours, 40 plus hours a week, can't afford the American dream. Yeah. So they have to fill the house with stuff. Every room needs furniture. The banks come to them and say, okay, we make it easy for you. We give you credit cards. Yeah. This is the big problem. Yes. But it's in the hearts of the people to have this American dream that's killing them. Yes. And this American dream that's killing the world, destroying the world, while the impoverished nations in Africa and the poor nations in Asia are getting poorer and poorer. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Yes. So... I understand and I agree, but what can we do about it? Yes, I can control my life. Yes. Dr. Sadi, he's teaching political science. He can preach and he can control his life. Okay. But what can we do All to right. help the future generations change? Can I explain, please? In Sweden, okay, they didn't sit uh, uh, and say that what can we do? They adopted a system which is called social democracy to bring the gap closer, okay? So what can we do is to preach Islam and say that Islam wants that what happening in Mecca, no rich, no poor. Islam wants that that's happened. That's a last command, okay? And we have to accept it. We have to ask him. This is what we have to teach Muslim, first of all, that understand why you say, eh, al mustaqim. not just blindly and then stand and say, and then you have to go there once a lifetime, not every year to go there. It's not a, a tourist place, okay? So you go there once a lifetime to promise Allah SWT that I accept your demand and then reject the opposite of this equality, which he told you that is inequality. He told you is the one 
who spread poverty among you. So you reject that one and then you go sacrifice for that equality. Say that I will sacrifice everything. I will sacrifice my Lamborghini, my Bugatti, my palace, everything. I will I mean. sacrifice okay so this is what we have to teach them that shaitan is this system brothers and sisters this system is shaitan we have to get rid of this system when sweden has made it okay not totally 50 percent then we can make it 100 percent that's why islam is uh, the miracle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the miracle of uh, prophet muhammad not because it has more rules, more, more praying, more fasting. Okay, what it does for us. This no alcohol. Sorry? No alcohol. No, no. Uh, alcohol will disappear if we get rid of the system. Why they have, they have to farm so much, you know, uh, what is it, uh, grape uh, farms for, for what? For, because they, they make money. If they don't make money, they will not do that. Everything. I told you about uh, this farmers of Afghanistan, everywhere, everything, every single problem. Just mention a single problem, big problem on this planet. Mention one of them that is not uh, connected to money. Uh, human trafficking, $150 billion a year. Human trafficking, $150 billion a year industry. So if it, uh, any, anything, robbery, drug, War, everything you think of is money. Al-mal wal banoon zinat al hayat al dunya. Yes. Al-mal wal banoon. Money and children are the are the ornamentation of this life. Yes. Okay. And and it does not. The Quran does not say that we can take them away. Okay. It is there to remain, but it is to use it correctly. Okay. So this form of exchange, brother, will remain there. Whether it is gold, whether it is diamond, whether it is corona, but don't do that. yes, sir. Most people don't use it correctly because it is in our nature to want more. You cannot get that rid of that nature unless you get rid of this source. Okay, I told you that <clears throat> some people. I get rid of it. someone else will take it. Sorry. I get rid of the money, the gold and the money, someone else will take it. No, the, the, yeah, the, no, the, no, that's, that's uh, what I didn't say, you get rid of your money. I said, uh, somebody said that greed, what we do about greed, okay? Greed about what? Greed about Lamborghini, about uh, Bugatti. When you cannot buy it, the greed will disappear. When you cannot gather that billions of dollars, the greed yes. will disappear. Greed for sport, greed for eating, that's nothing. Okay, that's not the greed. What people talk about greed is greed for money, okay? Power is also for money. You want power so that you become richer, all right? <clears throat> so get rid of that source, then greed will disappear. I told you that when I cannot steal mobile phone or a computer, I'm not coming to steal it from you because I go and take it from the store for free. Fis a lot, okay? So this is what I'm trying to say that that ihtina sirata, this way we are living is sirata la mustaqim. Okay, the way we are living is sirata la mustaqim, is prostitution, yeah, fraud, yeah, everything. Yeah. Yes, brother, everything is here. So what is sirata mustaqim is a way when none of this happens. So we are asking 1400 years. He has shown us those two dress of Ahram. I have made a movie, by the way, about that. I was in Mecca. I was shooting illegally <laughs> with a camera. No, I did it illegally. Illegally because they didn't give me the permission. So I came with my actor there. I, the, my movie is The Last Message of God, uh, American actor. So he found the, the, that equality with, in those two dress of Ahram. He said, this is the last message of God. I found it, okay? So the last message of God is there when we are all equal, no rich, no poor, because he created the planet for everyone, everything for everyone. We take it, we take it, mine, it's, this is mine. I'm not going to give to anybody. I'm killing millions of people for me, oh, us. So he created for everybody and we take it. Can, we, can we see the movie, brother? Is there a way? Yes, I will send you the, the, <clears throat> the link. Really? Yes, yes. Okay. And me and Sam, I, I, I went with the third richest man in America called Charlie Ennenberg. Charlie 
Annenberg. Okay. And he shot a movie there also. All right. He shot a clip about 20 minutes yeah, while yeah. he was with camera. Yeah, okay, great. I was his driver. Okay. Yeah. Charlie, and, yeah. Charlie Annenberg. It was incredible. incredible. Yeah. So it was also illegal, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I will send you. I put a lot of money on that movie. Uh, unfortunately, I I couldn't uh, promote it because I see that most people are interested in game and they, you know, kind of these. They are not so much interested in uh, this materialist world has made them like. Let us see. Let us look at it and see what we can do about it. Inshallah, inshallah, brother. My brother, uh, so. Oh, yes, we, Sam, we need to go. You, no. When did you order your Uber? Uh, as soon as we finish. Okay. Yeah, it was very uh, nice talking to you, brother. But please, uh, brother, uh, we are grateful, but I will try to send you this information. It will be sent to your mobile. These sure. websites me and Sam are building. Yes, sure. Because I think one, one can help you reach faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. The other one can help you understand the logic of how to approach others. And this book is translated to eight languages. Okay. It's not translated to Swedish yet. Okay. But it's a Christian priest from Yale University with a guy called, with me, okay. or me and him. And, and we wrote this book. And uh, you know, it's, it's uh, said, um, may God bless you. So let us exchange these, these hard work matters so that we can see how we can help each other based on uh, on things that already constructed the, the solution to dealing with greed is our personal attitude okay. changing okay. ourselves and hopefully our behavior will change others the issue is when i speak with young people you know i mentioned the words of asa yeah. uh, jesus yes jesus said Lay not up for yourself treasures on earth where must and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. Mm -hmm. This is, should be, that attitude should also be the attitude of every Muslim. Yes. Because in the Quran, it talks about these present time. It's only an illusion. Yes. This is only an illusion. Yeah. And it's only a few short years. Maybe maximum 90, 95 years, maybe 100 years for a few people. Yes. But most of us, 60, 70, 80 years. And what are we going to do during this time Is the question. for all eternity? Yes. God will judge us as we stand before him for all the good and bad we've done. And we need to get this into the heads of young people. We don't live for the 3,500 square foot home. Mm -hmm. We live for eternity. Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. I just would like to add something, uh, please. Uh, yes, if, uh, <clears throat> about, um, you know, you, you want to invite people to Islam. First of all, as I said, we have to learn ourselves the, the true Islam, the correct Islam. Um, and then, uh, as I say that, um, I said to someone else as well, that if we create a beautiful Muslim world, beautiful, through that beautiful message of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody will follow it, okay, automatically. But when we, we, can, we show them that, uh, you know, Islam is nothing special, even I, I was in UAE, and unfortunately I saw even people there, majority of them, they don't follow Islam, they don't like even Islam, okay? Unfortunately, I was in an Islamic bank, head of Islamic bank, I was going to make, get loan for my movie, The Last Message of God. It was 2008. <clears throat> I said that uh, they were not giving loan. I said, please uh, uh, make an exception because I'm going to make a movie for Islam. The head of the bank, Islamic bank said that, oh, come on, you coming from West, you, you, you care about Islam. Here we don't care about Islam, okay? So uh, unfortunately it is like this. You are living in that area, you know yourself as well, okay? I so how bad it is. Yeah, yeah, sorry? I know how bad it is. Yes, so- the Hearts of men are desperately wicked. Yes, so we have to create a beautiful world, true Islam to, to people, they will come. Like uh, I said uh, as well before, when Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi was going to save uh, people of India from uh, British rule, even Muslim followed him. They didn't care that he is a, 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 a Hindu, okay? They didn't care. 
He's going to save us. So people will follow Islam if Islam can say that I'm going to solve your problems. We are going to solve your problems. Every problem will, will disappear with this beautiful religion. Then they will follow if they see, alhamdulillah. Not just- My brother, I, I, have, I am a Muslim. Yes. I'm lucky I'm a Muslim. For yes. example, I was in the United States. I could have been drinking alcohol all the time. Yes. Going woman and I had a very beautiful car. But luckily, luckily, I was really listening to what God said about alcohol. Mm -hmm. It has its bad side and it has good side, but its bad side is much more. Yes. So I did not drink and I saved my life. Yes. I know some other Muslims who did not follow the rule of God. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? I I'm know. saying I started working in Russia in 1991. I was there until 1997. I was there for six years and I don't remember one single night. Mm -hmm. Because of vodka, yeah, yeah. they taught me how to drink and smoke. But, Abel, I, I forget from some some other. But I tried marijuana, by the way, brother. Yeah. Okay. So nobody is not a sin, a sinfulness. Sinfulness is part of our nature. Yes. However, God wants you to repent. Yes. But uh, repent is the name. How? Yani regardless of how sinful we are. Yes. God though is always open for those who go back to Him. Okay. But it solved my problem. I tell you the truth. Without that rule in the Quran, yes. not to drink alcohol, yes. I would have been now in much big trouble. And yes. I know some Saudi friends of mine who are in deep, I don't know, use the wrong word. They are in deep uh, problems because of drinking. Yes. Saudis who are here, living here. So, yes. so it seems you listen to the words of God, good things will happen. Yeah. Asa and I work at Bremen prison here in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, okay. The we prison. go there. There yes. are 800 teenagers, Saudi teenagers in prison. Oh, okay. Alcohol and drugs. Wow. Okay. The problem is everywhere in the world. Yeah. Everybody wants to be happy. They want the American dream. They think what they see on television and in the movies is the right way. Yes. We have a different way. But that's... And Allah can change lives and he yeah. can bring... Yeah, but that's, uh, that's I know, uh, again, that it is the, that system which uh, show them such a life, okay? There is another uh, way of life, uh, <clears throat> you know, show them um, uh, that uh, this, this uh, singer is like a god for them, you know? They guide them to this way, anyway. And uh, I have, by the way, made a movie, a documentary movie about alcohol as well, <clears throat> that I made it, yes, I made it in Russia. I was uh, there to uh, year 2001, I made it in Russia. Uh, I will send you also the link. Maybe you can show uh, to, to the prisoners that how bad it is, okay? I also used to drink before that, okay? So when I made this movie, I realized, because I never smoked my life. When I made this uh, documentary movie, I realized that, oh my God, this is bad. I'm not going to drink it anymore, okay? So <clears throat> uh, inshallah, I will send you the link. This is 15 minutes documentary movie that how Sweden has limited this uh, alcohol problem and how they save life here in, in Sweden. <clears throat> and Islam Russia. works. But Islam it, works. Yes. Islam works little by little. Okay. Person by person. Yes. But not a solution. Okay. Alhamdulillah. God bless you. We look God forward God. to working with you. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I'll see you in Sweden soon, inshallah. 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 I'll be here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Well, we get yeah. Yes, I can do that. And let us always exchange. Yes, of course. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum.